Today we will be reacting to 10 real life deaths caused by video games. I wonder where is the video? I'm gonna guess like too long a gaming session probably. Like not eaten. Don't know, just a few guesses. In 2007, 16-year-old Daniel Petrick shot both of his parents over a disagreement about Halo 3. After his parents found out that he had purchased the game against their wishes, they took it away and locked it in the home safe. Daniel found the key to unlock the safe. Unfortunately, his game was right next to a gun. Reacting on impulse, Daniel grabbed the gun. He then snuck up behind his parents and said, Would you close your eyes? I have a surprise for you. Then he shot them both, That's killing sick. his mother and critically injuring oh his father. God. After Daniel shot both of his parents, he then put the gun in his father's hand so he could make it look like a murder-suicide. As the police arrived on scene, they found Daniel trying to flee in the family van with the Halo 3 game in the passenger's seat. Because of his age, Daniel could not have been given the death penalty. He was given life in prison and won't be eligible for parole until 2032. That's mad. In 2012, an 18-year-old only known as Chuang died at an internet cafe in Taiwan after reportedly playing the video game Diablo 3 for 40 hours straight. An attendant at the cafe found Chuang 40. resting on the table next to his computer. The attendant woke him up. Chuang then stood up, took a few steps, and then collapsed onto the ground. He was pronounced dead soon after arriving at the hospital. His death was due in part to a blood clot in his leg, presumably from Sitting in front of that computer too long. Blizzard, Damn, the parent man. company over Diablo, released a statement that said, We feel that moderation is clearly important and that a person's day to day life should take precedence over 100%. any form of entertainment. A 17-year-old Philippine teen murdered his own grandmother after she interrupted his Dota match. The teen had been playing Defense of the Ancients in a neighborhood internet cafe. His grandmother, who told him not to play that game anymore, went to pick him up and return him to their home. When the woman began scolding him about the game, he alleges that he blacked out and beat his 68-year-old grandmother to death. What the, the teen fuck? cleaned up the bloody crime scene and called his aunt, who then called the police. The victim was found with wounds on her neck, chest, head, and arms. Police officers also found blood-stained ceramic shards of what appeared to be a smashed vase in a garbage bin in the front yard. The grandmother, who had raised the boy since early childhood on her own, was killed because the boy wanted to play a video game. That, that's messed up. South Korean man Lee Seung Sop wasn't just an avid player of StarCraft. He was addicted to it. He let the popular real-time strategy game take control over his entire Entire life. In 2005, he started spending all of his time playing the game, which cost him his job and longtime girlfriend. Lee would spend almost all of his money in an internet cafe to play it. He was used to playing 14 to 18 hour sessions, but when he started a 50 hour session, that was the end of his gaming days. At the end, he collapsed and died from exhaustion and dehydration. When it comes to games, there's a difference between healthy enthusiasm and an unhealthy the addiction in this like sorry for pausing the video here but this is now the second case of like people playing the game for too long now going back to when i was younger i used to play games for when he said like between 14 and 18 hours that somewhat average kind of for when i was back in my teens kind of thing but i would always every few hours get up i mean go to the bathroom or get something to drink because you're naturally you'll dehydrate, my mouth goes dry, and I want a drink, it's not just that I need a drink, I actually want one to, and I mean, this, this is crazy. Case, the man's love for StarCraft consumed him. 17-year-old Warren LeBlanc of Leicestershire, England, got life in prison for emulating a death scene in a video game in 2004. The game in question? Manhunt. Aww. The game was developed by Rockstar North. Armed with a knife and a claw hammer, Warren lured 14-year-old Stefan Pakira to a nearby park. He bludgeoned and stabbed the boy over 50 times until he died. In the trial, the mother of the victim was forced to leave the room, as details of her son's horrific murder were explained to the court. At the end of the proceedings, the judge stated, One thing is clear. You and you alone were responsible for this prolonged, vicious, and murderous attack on someone who thought of you as a friend. 
baptized with this. In 2013, an eight-year-old Louisiana boy intentionally shot and killed 87-year-old Mary Smothers, his own grandmother. The event happened only minutes after the boy started playing Grand Theft Auto. Authorities believe he intentionally shot Mrs. Smothers in the back of the head as she sat in her living room watching television. Family and friends of the victim have stated that the victim and the juvenile had a normal, loving relationship and even shared the same bedroom. The sheriff's department released a statement saying investigators have learned that the juvenile suspect was playing Grand Theft Auto 4 just minutes before the homicide occurred. The boy, now living with his parents, won't face charges. Under Louisiana law, a child younger than 10 is exempt from criminal responsibility. 18-year-old Devin Moore was actually arrested for Grand Theft Auto, not the game, the real-life crime, in 2003. While being processed at the police station, he lunged at one of the officers and grabbed his 40 caliber Glock. He shot him and two other police officers in the head as he made his way out of the station to then steal a police cruiser. Once caught and handcuffed, Moore uttered, Life is a video game. You've got to die sometime. In the trial, his defense team tried to use the Rockstar game Grand Theft Auto Vice City as a scapegoat for the young man's violent acts. Ultimately, nope. Devin was sentenced to death by lethal injection. In 2014, an 11-year-old boy in the Philippines was stabbed to death by a 16-year-old male. Allegedly, the 11-year-old victim hacked into the older teen's online Dota 2 account. According to the family and police investigations, the victim was taken to a construction site where he was beat up by the suspect. His head was slammed on the walls repeatedly before being stabbed over 40 times. The 16-year-old suspect denied any contact with the victim. However, he was found with heavily blood-stained shorts, and drops of blood leading up to his house. The stabbing was so horrific that the mother couldn't recognize her own son. 28-year-old Philadelphia man Tyrone Spellman beat his 17-month-old daughter to death in 2006. While playing the popular game Ghost Recon, his toddler crawled into the room and accidentally toppled over his Xbox, breaking it. In a fit of rage, Spellman repeatedly beat the child. Investigators contest that the child's battered body was then positioned next to a barbell in another room to make the death look like an accident. Spellman fled the scene but turned himself in the next day. Official autopsy reports indicate that the toddler's skull had been shattered and caved in by continued blows to the head. Spellman, who was a self-admitted video game addict, claimed that he did not intend to kill the child. He was sentenced to 22 to 45 years in prison. In 2014, 12-year-old Peyton Lutner was stabbed 19 times and left to die in the middle of the woods. The culprits responsible for the attempted murder were two of Peyton's close friends, 12-year-old Morgan Geiser and 13-year-old Anissa Wire. The two girls were trying to please a fictional video game character, Slenderman. Oh, they thought barf. that if they sacrificed a real person to him, he wouldn't haunt them or hurt their families. According to court documents, they told detectives they had been planning to stab her for months. Investigators discovered more than 60 drawings of Slenderman in Geiser's bedroom. One drawing depicted depicted a girl lying on the ground, and a person standing over her with the message, I love killing people. Once the pair lured Peyton into the woods, one of the girls pounced on her and started to stab her repeatedly. During the entire ordeal, the victim was screaming in agony and saying, I hate you guys. I'll never forgive you. I trusted you. Once the attack was over, the girls ran away. Miraculously, Peyton survived the attack and crawled her way to a nearby trail where she was discovered by a cyclist. Lutner has made an amazing recovery Hell from the yeah, attempted goods. murder, and as of this year, the girl who came within a whisper of death celebrated her 13th birthday. Nice. At least there was somewhat of a happy ending there. I did not expect that video to be as murderous, if you get what I mean. I was expecting more the along the lines of people kind of Pass, I say passing out, like, exhaustion kind of deaths. I didn't actually realise there was going to be deaths because people were clearly unwell and mentally unstable. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next reaction video. Have a good day. Bye.